As additional background before we provide a thorough discussion of Fourier representation of signals and linear time invariant systems is Euler's formula. Euler's formula is a mathematical formula in complex analysis that will show the deep relationship between trigonometric functions and the complex exponential function. And this is shown here. It's one of the most remarkable formulas found in mathematics. And basically it says this complex exponential e to the j theta is equal to cosine theta plus j sine of theta. I'm not going to discuss this in detail of how this was derived, but what I can tell you is that it's used very frequently in the application of signal processing. And what I want to do is show you and motivate that sines and cosines can be represented as complex exponentials. And since we know in earlier mathematical videos, we saw that any function can be represented as cosines and sine functions. And so if that's the case, then any function can be represented as complex exponentials. So here we'll start off with e to the j theta, where theta is a number, a real number, and in this case I use theta because we're going to relate it to the trigonometric functions, cosine and sine functions here. The j is an imaginary number, which we know is the square root of negative 1. Well, from this formula, we can get the conjugate. So that's just simply e to the minus j theta is equal to cosine of theta minus j sine of theta. Let's say we add these two functions now, these two equations, e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta. When we do that, we have the following equation given here. Here I substituted e to the j theta for cosine of theta plus j sine of theta, and e to the minus j theta is cosine of theta minus j sine of theta. So here, e to the minus j theta is just the complex conjugate of e to the j theta. You can view this Euler's formula as going from polar form, where we have an amplitude of 1, a radius of 1, and an angle of theta. And that cosine theta plus j sine theta is the rectangular form. And there are formulas going from this form to the polar form to the rectangular form that you found uh, in your earlier mathematical courses. So here, e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta, when we add these two expressions, we see that the j sine of thetas cancel out. And what we're left with is e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta is equal to 2 cosine theta. Solving for cosine theta, we have e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta divided by 2. Similarly, we can get an expression for sine omega t, but instead of adding these two expressions, we subtract e to the minus j theta from e to the j theta. When we do that, the cosine terms will cancel, and we're left with 2j sine of theta. Dividing by 2j, we have sine omega t is equal to e to the j omega t minus e to the minus j omega t divided by 2j. So these are alternate forms of Euler's formula but in this case, what we have is that cosine theta can be expressed as a weighted sum of two complex exponentials. Likewise, we have sine of omega t as a sum of weighted exponentials, or difference in this case, where we have the coefficients in front of the complex exponentials to be imaginary associated with sine omega t. Now that we have a background of complex sinusoids, let's take a look at Fourier representations. We'll first look at periodic continuous time signals. And when it's represented in terms of the Fourier, we call this the Fourier series. We saw in the earlier slide that a cosine function can be composed as a sum of 
complex exponentials shown here, where we have one half equals one half e to the j omega t plus one half e to the minus j omega t equals cosine of omega t. Similarly, we have sine omega t is equal to one half over j e to the j omega t minus one half j e to the minus j omega t. So what this says here, where we have omega equals two pi divided by t, where t is the period, and one over t is the frequency f. So we know that in this example that the cosine can be represented as a sum of complex exponentials weighted by these coefficients one half, one for e to the j omega t and one half for e to the minus j omega t. And for the sine, it's again a weighted sum of complex exponentials except our coefficients shown here and here is weighted and is a complex number. Well, we found in earlier videos that the cosine and sine can be represented, can represent almost any function. So if a cosine and sine is represented as complex exponentials, then we can generalize that any function x sub t is composed of a weighted sum of complex exponentials. So in this case, by definition, we can synthesize a function x of t in terms of complex sinusoids e to the j k omega zero t, where k goes from minus infinity to infinity, and these are integers. x of k is the coefficient associated with e to the j k omega zero t. Again, we can think of omega zero as the fundamental frequency and k as an integer and k omega zero is the harmonics associated with this function x sub t. We'll provide more examples but the idea I want to get here is that since we know x sub t can be composed of sines and cosines now we extend this idea such that x sub t is composed of complex sinusoids. Now for aperiodic continuous time signals, when we represent this in terms of a Fourier representation, this is called the Fourier transform. However, when we think of aperiodic, that means it has no period t, or you can think of it as a period t of infinity, where it doesn't repeat itself. So instead of a sum, shown here, we have an integral which is basically says that our spectrum, our signal described in the frequency domain, is a continuous signal. This expression here, x j omega t, is the Fourier transform of x sub t. Alternatively, this says that we have an infinite number or sum of ex complex exponentials. Notice we don't have a k here since this is not periodic. What we do have is an infinite set of frequencies that's continuous, whereas in the periodic continuous time signals we have a discrete set of frequencies. Now this 1 over 2 pi scale factor can be reduced where we have d omega divided by 2 uh, pi is equal to df since we know that omega is equal to 2 pi f so there we can just basically do like a change of variables and now this expression here is a function of just the frequency f but these two are related by a scale factor of 2 pi 